Hi, I'm Monique from Flow Flourish Yoga and welcome to this short wrist free flow. Often um, in yoga people can get wrist injuries as our wrists were not made to hold a lot of our body weight so it's really important that we warm them up and we look after them before putting lots of weight um, in them and practice strengthening them. Uh, you might also just have a wrist injury from something else. So this is a beautiful wrist-free flow for those who have injured wrists and also for those who just want to focus on using their legs mainly. So today in this class you will need two yoga blocks, your mat and yourself. So let's get started. We're going to start first in child's pose. So coming into it. Our big toes are together and our buttocks are resting on our heels. If you, you can't get yours down, you can pop a yoga block underneath to support yourself. Knees can be apart. I prefer this. I find it more comfortable. Or you can have your knees together, whatever feels best for your body. Then we're just going to stretch our hands out in front, resting our forehead onto the ground. Again, if your forehead can't reach the ground, pop a yoga block underneath. And just settling in here. We're just going to pause and slow down before we start our flow today. I would like you to just notice how your body is feeling. Maybe you have some areas in your body that are a bit tight. Maybe emotionally wise, you're feeling a bit agitated, angry, or sad. Just noticing how you feel. Now bring your attention to your breath. I want you to inhale through your nose and exhale through your nose, inhaling deeply and exhaling with a slight squeeze of your stomach at the end, inhaling Exhaling, continue to focus on this cycle of breath and as we slow down and think about our breath it helps us to ignore the distractions around us, it helps us to tune into our body and to be present in this very moment. We're going to slowly lift our head up, slowly bring your hands towards your knees and coming into sitting on our heels. Again, if you can't quite get your buttocks to your heels or it feels a bit uncomfortable, pop a yoga block underneath or even a, a blanket underneath if you have sore knees. So I'm just going to turn to the front for you guys. Walking your right fingers out to the side, just leaving your left hand resting on your thigh. You're going to drop your left ear down to your left shoulder. If you can walk your right fingers out a little bit more, do that. Just starting with a nice shoulder and neck stretch, slowly warming our body up. Making sure that you're staying up nice and straight, drawing your ribs and core in. Slowly walk those fingertips back, head back up, resting that right hand on your thigh, walking out those left fingertips, 
dropping that right ear to your right shoulder, just checking that that shoulder's staying down, it's not starting to hunch up. And not forcing anything, so just going as far as it feels good for you. We never want any pain in yoga. There'll be times of challenge, definitely, but never any pain. So if you do feel any, please stop, back off, modify. It's really important to listen to our bodies because they're all different. And so we have different limits. Walking those fingertips back, head back up. Just going to do some neck circles, so dropping the ear to the left, rolling the chin down to your chest, ear to the right, and rolling up, looking up. Left ear to the shoulder, chin down. Right ear to the shoulder. Then we'll go the other way, so chin to the chest. Left ear to the shoulder, rolling back, looking up. Right ear to the shoulder, chin to the chest, and then we'll just pull us here. Slowly bringing your head back up. We're going to come into a tabletop position, but modified, so we're not using our hands. So you'll just need to grab your yoga blocks now. So, popping your blocks out in front of you, shoulder width apart. Um, coming onto your forearms, takes a little bit of adjusting. Um, so we want to make sure that our knees are under our hips and our elbows are still under our shoulders. You might like to have your palms facing up or you can bring your palms together, whatever feels best for you here. So just like a normal tabletop position, we really want to make sure that our core is on. We're not sinking down. So core is on, spine's nice and long. We're lifting out of our shoulders. So a little bit of rounding here to lift them up. And we're going to do a modified cat cow <laughs> with our hands lifted so our wrists are free. So now we're going to drop our belly down. Start to open our heart, looking up, then rounding our spine, tucking your chin for cat. Inhale, arching and opening for cow. Exhale, rounding and tucking for cat. So let's use that breath. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. One more. Inhaling. So my favorite movements to do in the morning and just to bring movement into your body. Coming back to center, bringing your weight back onto your heels, moving the blocks aside for now. And we're going to come to the top of our mat in a yogi squat pose. So coming into that, however, is uh, best for you. So feet a um, bit bigger than hip width apart. You can be on the balls of your feet with your fingertips out in front, just making sure that that spine's really long. If you're a bit unstable, you can pop a yoga block underneath to support yourself. Or if you're feeling nice and open, work those feet down. You can bring your hands to your heart. Prayer pose and using those elbows to open your um, knees out to the side. So just checking that your core is on, it helps with stability here. And then that spine's nice and long. Imagine you have a string coming from the crown of your head and someone's pulling that up. Just closing your eyes here before we start to move our body. Okay, opening up your eyes. We're going to power down through the soles of our feet, straightening our legs. Inhale, sweep those arms out and up. Hands come to our heart, turning our toes forward now so our feet are hip width apart. Then we're going to inhale, arms up. Hands come together. Exhale to your heart. 
and folding down from our hips. Keeping a bend in your knees here because it's our very first fold. Inhale, we're going to come to our fingertips. Then exhale, we're going to sweep our arms behind, fingertips grazing the ground, bending back, coming into chair pose. So it's kind of a wide stance, chair pose, our feet are hip width apart here. So checking that you can still see your toes, that your knees aren't too far forwards. Really sinking back, core on, drawing that nice long line of your spine. Then we're going to put weight into the left foot, shooting that right leg back, coming into our crescent lunge. So checking out that front knee is over the ankle and that back heel is really drawing away. Powering down through your feet. That's where our stability comes. Checking that you're not leaning too far forwards. Core on. Knit those ribs together. Inhale those arms up. Feeling nice and strong and powerful here. Okay, then we're going to straighten that front leg. Folding over for a bit of a pyramid um, variation. So we're keeping that back heel lifted. You can have a little micro bend in this front leg and you can also grab your yoga blocks and just not dumping the weight onto your hands because we're not using our wrists, just using it for a bit of stability. Or you can just use your fingertips up to you. Then we're going to start it to bring our weight forward, bending that front leg, step the back foot in, exhale, forward fold, turn your toes out, coming into yogi squat. So that's our little sequence, we're going to do it on the other side now, powering down, inhale up, exhale, turn those front toes forward, inhale, arms up. Hands come together, exhale, folding down. Inhale, come to those fingertips or shins. Exhale, sweep those arms behind you, coming to chair pose. Really turning on those leg muscles and core. This time, weight into that right leg. Shoot the left leg back. Heel drawing away and up. Really... And checking that you're not leaning too far forward. Drawing the shoulders down away from you. So you don't want them shrugging up too high. Then the front leg straightens. Exhale. Folding down. Have a little bend here. It's okay if you can't come all the way down. Coming to wherever um, is most successful for your body. Breathing here. Start to bring the weight into that front foot, draw the left foot in, exhale, fold, turn those toes out, coming to yogi squat, let's keep going, so I'm not going to do as many cues now because we've already done it once, so it will be a little bit faster, inhale, up, exhale, turn those toes in, finding that hip width stance, inhale, sweep those arms up, exhale, folding down, inhale, half bend, exhale, sweep the arms behind you, come into chair pose, step that right foot back, crescent lunge, really making sure that those hips are square, straighten that front leg, exhale, fold. Remember, you can use the blocks here. You can have one on either side for easy access. Then bring that back foot in. Exhale, fold. Turn the toes out. Yogi squat. Inhale, rising up. Exhale, find your stance. Inhale, arms up. Exhale. Fold it down. Inhale. Half fold. Exhale. Sweep the arms behind. Chair pose. Check to see those toes. Core is on. Ribs knitting in. Step that left foot back. 
powering down through your feet for stability and strength. Straighten that front leg, exhale, folding down. Remember you can have that bend in that front leg. Draw the back leg in, exhale, fold, toes out, yogi squat. Let's keep going, inhale, rising up, exhale, toes come forward, inhale. Arms up, exhale, folding forward, inhale, come to your half fold, exhale, sweep into jet pose, really checking that, powering down, your weight is more in the heels, and that core is on, then stepping that right foot back, crescent lunge. Straighten the front leg, fold it down for that pyramid variation, keeping the back heel lifted. Step the foot in, exhale, fold. Coming into that squat pose. Rising up. Exhale, toes forward, inhale. Sweep the arms up, exhale. Hands through heart. We are fold. Inhale. Half fold. Exhale. Sweeping behind, coming into chair. Weight into the right foot. Step back. Crescent lunge. Taking time to check that that front knee is not going too far forward. Straighten the front leg. Folding down. Draw that back foot in, forward fold. Turn the toes out, yogi squat. Remember you're doing whatever variation is best for your body. Let's do it one more time. Hopefully you're feeling nice and warm. Inhale up, exhale, toes forward. Inhale, sweep up. Check that your ribs are drawing in, exhale. Forward fold. Hopefully you're feeling a lot more open in your back body. Inhale. Half fold. Exhale. Sweep the arms behind. Coming into your chair pose. Stepping that right foot back. Crescent lunge. Straighten the front leg. Exhale. Fold. Checking that your spine is long. So it's either drawing this way or if you can fold it's drawing down step the back foot in exhale fold coming to your yogi squat last one inhale up exhale find your hip width stance inhale arms up exhale forward fold Inhale, half fold, exhale, chair pose, weight into the right leg, step that left leg back, crescent lunge, straighten the front leg, folding down, keep that little micro bend, really engaging that kneecap, sorry, drawing your kneecap up to engage that thigh. Bending the front leg, step the back in, forward fold. Come into yogi squat, and we're just going to pause here. I want you to just notice how you're feeling now. Do you have more warmth running through your body? Feeling a bit more energy after starting to move your body? Maybe you can feel your heart beating faster. I'm going to inhale, rise up. Exhale, toes come forward. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, hands draw it down, forward fold. Inhale, half fold. 
exhale, sweep the arms behind, chair pose. Now we're going to lower down onto our buttocks. So lower, 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 lower. Slowly, slowly, slowly. Use your core. Coming into our boat pose. I'm just going to adjust on the mat. There's different levels of boat pose. So if you take your hands behind your knees, you can just be on your tippy toes. Your core is really on. Ribs are knitting in, spine is long, so we don't want to be rounding, really opening up that heart. So choose your level, you might stay here, and that is fine. You might be able to lift your legs up, stretch those arms out in front of you. If you want the next one, straighten those legs, whatever feels best for you. We're just going to stay here for a few breaths, really turning on that heat in, in our centre. So breathing in and exhale, inhale and exhale. I'm shaking, you grab this, inhale, exhale, last one, inhale and exhale. Then slowly lowering all the way down, adjusting yourself on your mat so that the soles of your feet are on the ground, hip width apart. Just taking a moment here before we come into bridge pose. You're going to plant your hands beside your hip, palms down. So even though we're um, planting our hands and wrists into the ground, we're not really putting the weight there. The weight comes from our heels and our shoulders. So powering down through your heels, you're going to lift your hips up. Then you're going to work your shoulders kind of underneath to lift your chest. If it feels good for your wrists, you can link your hands underneath. So really squeezing your buttocks here, lifting, using your core for bridge pose. If this doesn't feel good for you and it's not too available for you, you can pop a block just at the top of your buttocks to support yourself here. That's also a beautiful pose. So just doing whatever feels best for you here. Again, we're going to stay here for four breaths. Inhale. And exhale. Just making sure that those knees stay hip width apart. Exhale. Last one. Inhaling. Exhaling. If your hands are clasped, let them go. Slowly, slowly, slowly roll your back down. Draw your knees in. Give them a hug. Rock side to side with a beautiful low back massage. Then bringing those feet back to the mat, coming into reclined pigeon. So your right ankle's going onto your left thigh. You might stay here. Okay, um, if you don't want to use your wrists, or if you do have some movement available in them, um, taking them through and linking them over that left shin. Checking that your lower back is really drawing into the ground, and same with your shoulders. Flexing those right toes to help protect your knee. And clasp your hands. Release that leg down. Take the left ankle onto the right thigh. Again, take whatever modifications best for your body. And just focusing on your breath. You might have a fair bit of tension, tightness in your hip. Or buttock. So really just 
focusing on that breath to help you let go and release. Releasing your hands, hugging your knees once more into your chest, rock from side to side, and then drawing your nose to your knees, squeeze, 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 squeeze your whole body in, and then release, stretching your legs out, feet turned out to the side, arms resting by your side, palms facing up. I'm just getting in a comfortable position for Shavasana. You might like to pop a jumper on or a blanket if it's a bit cold where you are. And just relaxing your eyebrows. Releasing your jaw and clenching it. Feel your shoulders sink into the ground. And just wherever in your body there's tension, just picture it. Moving out, so moving down your arms or down your legs to your fingertips and toes and just letting go of it. Maybe there's some thoughts in your mind that you need to let go of, anything that is not serving you. Any negative thoughts or negative emotions, letting them leave your body and your mind. And just stay here for as long as you need. Don't rush, take your time. And then take this peace and energy and calmness off your mat and into your day. Thank you for flowing with me.